Najib Razak, the former Malaysian Prime Minister convicted of money laundering linked to the 1MDB embezzlement scandal, has lost his final bid to overturn his 12-year prison sentence. He's been sent to jail. The massive embezzlement of billions of dollars from the 1MDB state fund was one of the world's biggest financial scandals and reverberated from Malaysia and Singapore to Wall Street and beyond. Our Southeast Asia editor Jonathan Head has more. He was once the most powerful man in the country, untouchable even. But Najib Razak arrived for the final stage of his appeal, knowing that the odds were now against him. Every attempt to overturn or even delay the 12-year prison sentence he'd been given, thwarted by a judiciary which stood firm behind the original verdict. I will not get a judgment based on the principles of fair trial. I did not get it. The son of a former prime minister, he was groomed for power and held office for nine years in a country where the ruling party had never lost an election. <laughs> Stories of spectacular greed and corruption brought thousands out onto the streets in protest. But investigations into huge losses from the state-run investment fund known as 1MDB went nowhere. The Department of Justice has filed a civil complaint seeking to forfeit and recover more than $1 billion in assets associated with an international conspiracy to launder funds stolen from one Malaysia development barad, or 1MDB. Even when the United States launched its own investigation, Mr. Najib looked secure in a country where power has rarely been accountable. But at the last election four years ago, an opposition coalition led by Malaysia's most renowned political figure, Mahathir Mohamad, once Mr. Najib's ally, rode the public yearning for change to an unexpected and historic victory. Mr. Najib, seemingly in shock as he accepted the verdict of the people, was untouchable no longer. His home was raided. More than 200 top-priced designer handbags still in their boxes were among the many luxury items seized. I think this is the biggest seizure in uh, Malaysian history. And multiple criminal charges soon followed. For those who've dreamed of a cleaner politics in Malaysia, this is surely a moment to savour. But Najib Razak remains wealthy, influential and popular in some parts of Malaysian society. It's probably too soon yet to write off his political career. Jonathan Head, BBC News, Bangkok. Well, Claire Rukosler-Brown is the editor of the Sarawak Report, an online anti-corruption website that investigated 1MDB. One, one uh, she says that the judiciary, with today's decision, has put a full stop, finally, to protracted case after farcical delays. Well, I had a fairly sleepless night trying to keep abreast of, of the sort of daytime uh, trial activities um, in Kuala Lumpur. And I have to say, right up to the last minute, uh, most people were, were still couldn't really believe that uh, the final uh, you know, hit of the gavel would come down on, on Najib. But um, as you describe it, it, it really had descended into farcical delay by the end. He'd managed using all the power and wealth and influence that uh, your report um, so well described. He had managed really to hold off um, this, this moment for, for years um, with, with all these tactics. Um, and yet today, I think uh, we had a situation where he'd stirred up so much, he'd, he'd sort of in a Trumpian way politicised all of this. He'd attacked the judges, he'd attacked, accused the chief justice and the original judge of being corrupt and conflicted. Uh, it was becoming nasty, um, it had become farcical, and I think um, everyone really in Malaysia knew this had to had to stop. And, and so almost, uh, you know, terribly unexpectedly today, the, the appeal court just said enough's enough. We've, we've Seen, we've seen all the evidence and there's really no more um, room for delay. Yeah, I think the, the line was there's, there's no merit in the arguments being put forward. But is this the start, though, of much more litigation and many more people facing justice now? 
Well, um, this is just the first of several uh, sets of charges that Najib Razak is facing. Um, in fact, it's, it's perhaps the least of the uh, crimes uh, that he's been uh, charged with that are going through the courts. So um, things are not looking good for Najib unless he manages to use his influence to get a pardon with the king, which I think they'll be hesitating to do. His own Omno party, I think, had decided that they had, you know, they didn't really want to be tarred with all this any longer. And, and that's why there was so little interference in the course of justice. Um, there are other senior politicians around Najib. He presided over a huge uh, endemic corruption that had developed within his political party in Malaysia. And yes, uh, several others are now looking um, at uh, following him into jail. I, I want to come to the importance this means now for Malaysia. But just before that, just, just talk us through a little bit about your uh, investigations. What, many, many years ago now, uh, you were born, I think, in Sarawak, weren't you, in Borneo, and you were investigating something else, weren't you, I think deforestation, before you came across what seemed to be this huge embezzlement. Well, yes, I mean, so much of what is going wrong in countries like Malaysia is, is driven by poor governance, which is uh, caused by corruption generally. Um, and as I started to sort of try and stand up for the indigenous people in the in the area that I've been brought up in, East Malaysia, um, and to, to, to try and counter this senseless, insane deforestation uh, for palm oil plantations uh, that, was, that was going on, I started to, to cotton on to just how this was all just about money going into a handful of pockets. And as I looked into the corruption situation in Malaysia, I, I, I started to cotton on to this one particular story, which was 1MDB. And, and as I started shaking the tree and, um, and asking around, I, I, I started to develop sources. Um, and um, eventually was able to pick up the phone, actually, to the FBI and DOJ in America and say, I've got a few hundred million that have been laundered through your country. Are you interested? Claire Rucastle-Bram.